would like to say good morning to everyone and welcome you all to the Ithaca Branch class. I will be your moderator this morning and my name is Pam Venuti. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school, <clears throat> excuse me, is dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and the revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. Um, this Ithaca branch was established in 1979. At this time, I would like to introduce you to the Dean of the Ithaca branch, Dr. Robert Well, White, and the, our host for this morning and every morning that we're here is um, Dr. Greg Prestis. In the school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Heavenly Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim, and it has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, and it has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but now, now know that every Lord must have a name and every God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord or God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that's made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn the cloud all the way around the edges of the chart to show you that everything on this chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself <clears throat> in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of a Holy Name Bible. 
Also in the school, we teach by a divine pattern of the universe. It's called a divine pattern because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a visit, vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consisted of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. In the school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and how that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. <clears throat> now in the school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the newer estate. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth and at this time, I'd like to ask Dr. Judith Turner to say our prayer. That will be followed by our scripture, which is Acts, the second chapter. And that will be read by Dr. Terry Bomarito and as a backup Rochelle. So go ahead, Judith. Let us all bow our hearts and minds. to the one true Elohim, the one true savior, the one who long ago has already saved us and placed us within his purpose. And uh, let us just beseech him to keep us steadfast, to keep us strong in his love. In Yahshua's precious name, let us all say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Scripture reading is Acts, the second chapter. I'll be reading from a King James version of the Bible. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like that of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling with Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was no noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own tongue. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all of these which speak Galilean? And 
how hear every man his own tongue, wherein we were born. Parthian and Medes and Elam and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Copernicus, no, Cappadocia, and in Pontus and in Asia, Perignia, Pomphylia, in Egypt, in the other parts of Libya, and Caesarea, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretes, and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues and wonderful works of Elohim. And they were amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meanest this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Galilee, and all ye that dwell at Jeru Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, and ye suppose, as ye suppose, seeing it but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith Elohim, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your no young men shall see visions, and your old men shall have dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show show wonders in the heaven above in signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor vapor of smoke the sun shall turn into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of Yahweh come and it shall come to pass that whoever whoever so shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be saved ye men of Israel hear these words Yahshua the Messiah of Nazareth a man approved by Elohim among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which Elohim did by him in the midst of you. And you yourself also know him, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of Elohim, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom Elohim raised up, having loosed the, the pains of death, because it was not possible that he shouldn't beholden of it for david speaketh concerning him i foresaw yahweh always before my face for he is on my night my right hand that i shall not be moved therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither wilt I suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy and with the count count countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that Elohim had sworn an oath to him, that of the fruits of his loin, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Messiah to sit on his throne. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of the Messiah, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Yahshua hath Elohim raised up, whereof we are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of Elohim exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into heaven, but he saith himself, Yahweh said unto Elohim, Sit thou on the right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that Elohim hath made that same Messiah whom ye have crucified, both Elohim and the Messiah. Now when he heard that, excuse me, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and say unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, 
men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahshua the Messiah for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises unto you and your children and to all that are far off, even as many as Yahweh Elohim shall call. And with many other words, did he testify and exhort saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. They that they gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men of, as every man had need. And they continuing, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and single-minded singleness of heart, praising Elohim and having favor with all the people. And the Yahweh added to the church daily, such as it should be saved. Acts the second chapter. Thank you, Judith, and thank you, Terry. For our first speaker this morning, I'd like to introduce Dr. Charles Marshall from our Tampa class. I had a sneaking suspicion that this was going to be the way it is. That's the problem when you go to another class and they always want to put you up. But that's, uh, that's okay. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be any place where they're telling you the truth about Yahshua the Messiah. Because the truth is hard to find in the earth plane in this day. It's always been hard to find in the spirit. And now then there's the physical is uh, getting just as difficult. It's always been difficult, but it's even getting more difficult. And it just shows me that we're coming down to a time to where we need to be extremely serious about what's going on in the world, in the spirit, and that we diligently seek Yahweh and diligently go to where we can hear the truth because the truth is very rare in this earth plane today. And so it's a privilege and an honor just, just to be in a class and be someplace where the truth is being told. Uh, could we start right at the, the scripture reading, please? Uh, Acts, the second chapter. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord and in one place. And that's what we do. We go to these Zoom classes and we go to our individual, the physical classes are starting to start up again, which is, is a good thing. But these Zoom classes have been very, very good because it's the way I'm looking at it is th these Zoom classes have kind of brought us all together and we can go to different classes in different parts of the country and, and it's, it's a unifying effect. And this being June 6th, of course, which is, of course, was the day of Pentecost and the day where Moses spoke down the law from the mountain. And we'll get into that a little bit. So these Zoom classes are uniting us and which shows me even more so that we're getting down to the close of this age and that we're getting close to the consummation of this creation, which I don't think anybody's got a problem with. Go on ahead, read please. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. See now, this is this is similar well similar because this is like a this is not like this is the a fulfillment of what went on back at Mount Sinai, which also happened on June sixth. All right, where Yahweh spoke down the law from the mountain. Okay, and it says here that it was as a sound of a rushing mighty wind. Well, when Yahweh spoke, it says back in Exodus that when He spoke, that it shook the people. And it was like thunder and lightning. And it was, it was, it would be like a mighty rushing wind when he spoke that into the people. 
And the people there, as a matter of fact, told Moses, you see, not to have Yahweh speak to them anymore because it scared the bejesus out of them, if you will, you know. <laughs> so, so they were scared. So they told them not to have Yahweh speak like that anymore. Well, I'll tell you what, when you first come into this class and a lot of times when you're in this class, Yahweh will speak to you and it will shake you up, mm -hmm. you see. But the, but the difference is he has now put his spirit within in you. And he, when he speaks to you, it will shake you up. But you see, it will cause you to inner look into yourself and it will cause you to see things within yourself and with that spirit within you, you see, you, do, it's, you don't want to hear, you don't go, I don't want to hear you speaking to me. You accept the chastisement and you accept what he's trying to tell you. But it only takes Yahshua putting that within you. And that's what is being demonstrated here at Pentecost is because here he is pouring out his spirit and he's putting his spirit within you and to cause you to be able to accept his, his wisdom, his knowledge, his intelligence, all of the foundational things, love, beauty, you know, power, foundation, strength. He's putting those attributes within you. Those attributes are him. All right. And he's putting that within you to cause you to become a new creature, to change your mind. You see, I think all of us can give the testimony that we're different than when we first came into class. We had this way of thinking. We had that way of thinking. You see, and all of that has been changed because there is a change that takes place when that spirit is put within you, putting out them carnal thoughts, your carnal ways, the way that you think and replacing it with his mind, his knowledge, his intelligence, and his wisdom. Okay, would you go on and read more, please? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. And he gave them, and he spoke with them with cloven tongues, which is a, is a symbolic or a manifestation of the, of the law and the prophets. It's just like before I came into class, I couldn't understand why certain animals you could eat and certain animals you couldn't eat. I didn't understand that because to me, what was wrong with pig? A pig was a good meat, you know, and I liked pig. But to think that that was supposedly unclean. But see, I didn't understand the spiritual principles that was being put forth, that a cloven hoof was a sign of the law and the prophets. Now, a pig has a cloven hoof. You see, but we're told when we come into class, don't believe us, you see, that we want to give you the evidence for what we're saying. But you're, you see, on the other hand, required to take and look these things up in the law and in the prophets. And then you're to chew on the things when you hear, go to class and you hear the things that the people say you chew, you know, after class, you chew upon what you heard. In other words, you think about the things that you heard and you mull them over. And you take and you glean, you understand, the principles in there that's trying to teach you and show you something about Yahshua, the Messiah. It's no longer about me. It's no longer about you. It's all about Yahshua, the Messiah. See, that's another change of mind. When we read this book before we came into class, we always thought it was about me, about me, about me. But now we find out it's about Yahshua, you see. And that's what all of this is trying to show us, that this is all about Yahshua. And he's putting that within us now and changing us. Okay, could you read, please, more? And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with the other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And you see, we can all testify to this also, that this book, this Bible, does not read like it did before. And when people talk, when we talk and when we preach the gospel, you understand, it is, it is as another tongue. The book, you see, was, is written in another tongue. We speak in another tongue. And in Yash, unless Yahshua puts the, the, uh, the uh, uh, gift of, of uh, the Holy Spirit in you or the gift of interpretation of tongues, you see, you cannot understand it because it's a foreign tongue. Before I read the Bible, it read completely different. When I, when I came into class and I heard people preaching the true gospel, you see, it was a different tongue. It was a different language. And for the first time, you see, we could actually understand what was being said and what was being said to us. And when we read the Bible now, it's completely different. And when you hear people speak, 
the truth about Yahshua, the Messiah, you see, it is a different tongue. And unless he puts that spirit within you, people cannot understand what you're saying, even though you're speaking in the same language. You understand? It's just, it's just amazing. Uh, let's see. Let's go to verse... Uh, Seventeen. Uh, Twenty-five, please. Oh, okay. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw Yahweh always before my face, for he is on my right hand, and I shall not be moved. And see, that's basically when we come into class now. That's that's <laughs> we can relate to that, and we can understand that. You see. So read on, because there's more here. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also was my flesh rest in hope. Because, because now, see, we can rest in hope. We are no, I am no longer required to do things. As a matter of fact, I can't do the right thing. Chuck cannot do the right thing. It's Yahshua in Chuck. It's Yahshua in all of us, you see, that's causing us to rest and it causing us to do the right thing. It's, it's taken a big load. It's taken a big burden off of us, you see. But a lot of people still think that they have to do something, that they have to, you know, do something to please Yahweh, you see. The only thing we can do is relax, you see, accept that Holy Spirit. And, of course, we can't accept the Holy Spirit. He, you see, puts that within us, you understand. It just... We can rest. Read. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Because see, now we have a hope. And now we, we, not, we can see the hope. We don't just have a hope. Now we can see the hope. He is giving us a glimpse. He's giving us evidence. He's putting his mind within us. He's putting those attributes within us. So that now that our, we're converting our mind and now he's causing us to be able, we don't just have hope. You see, now we can start to see the hope and understand the hope, you know, through witnesses and through evidence, not just through hearsay. Okay, read on, please. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thine countenance. Now see, he has made us, you know, to know his way and the way of life. You see, there's, you look out in this earth plane today and you see nothing but hate. You see nothing but discontent. You see nothing but violence. And it's just all manifesting itself more and more and more, you see. But he has put his spirit within us. And now that he's put that spirit within us, you see, we can look at what's going on out here. And we can look at what's going on even in the, in the spiritual world and see how people are just just completely trying to uh, destroy this whole doctrine of Yahshua the Messiah, but we still are full of joy and we're full of hope. You see, it's, I, you know, it's hard, it's hard to describe. It's just hard to say that how that we can take and sit here and look at the world deteriorating right before our eyes you see, but yet have hope and have joy. You know, read on. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Read. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that Elohim hath sworn with an oath to him, that of fruits of his loin, according to the flesh, would raise up Yahshua the Messiah to sit on his right on his throne excuse me so th therefore you see he has sworn oath to the fruit of his loins now uh, last night at the ocean side they were talking about wisdom okay which is an attribute of yashua uh, which is a attribute of yahweh you see wisdom knowledge intelligence love justice beauty power strength foundation all of these things are the attributes of yahweh and like i said before now, on the day of Pentecost, that's what he was pouring out, you see. Now, if you read back in uh, Proverbs, well, we'll get it. Proverbs, uh, let's go to Proverbs 7. Uh, with, last night, they were working with 8. 
but I was reading uh, Proverbs 7, and I came, uh, this is pretty cool, okay? Uh, start, please, if you would, at Proverbs 7 and 4. This is Proverbs 7 and 4. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. Now, I do not remember the transcript at this time, but in a transcript, Dr. Kinley was saying that the attributes of wisdom, knowledge, intelligence, love, all of that, they are feminine. Now, we say that Yahweh is both masculine and feminine. And here it's saying that wisdom, you see, thou art my sister, you see, showing forth that it is, it is feminine. Okay, mm -hmm. could, you, could you read on, please? That they may keep thee from the stranger, woman from the stranger, which flatter it with her words. You know, that's, you know, that's talking about what's prevalent in the world today, lies, you see, the not being the truth. You understand? We've got to stay. He's saying to stay away from that. We've got to keep our eyes on the sun, the S-O-N. We've got to keep our eyes on the sun, fly above the storm clouds. You see, read. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement. Go on. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youth, a young boy, a young man void of understanding. See, that was us before we came into class. We were void of understanding. You understand? We come into class, and that's one of the attributes that we get. Read. Passing through the street near her corner, and he went, and he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black, and in the dark night. Mm -hmm. And behold, there met him a woman with an attire of a harlot and scepter of the heart. She is loud. See, what, what, now when, the, when I used to read this before, before I would come into class, I would be looking at this at strictly from a physical standpoint. Mm -hmm. And when they would be talking about a harlot, I would be a, a, a putting this towards the physical, not understanding that what they're talking about here is something spiritual, you see, and that the adultery that they're talking about here, you understand, I would look at that before as physical. Now, I'm not saying physical adultery is good and all that. That's not what I'm saying, you understand? But what I'm saying is that this is trying to get you to understand that true adultery, you see, is, uh, well, I'll just say it like it is, is going out here and participating in Christianity. Yeah. Is going out here and participating in Buddhism, mm -hmm. Muslims, or just going out here and participating in the world. The world in the state and condition that it is in you understand? Yeah. Before before I came into class, you see, I I I, I would I did protest. You understand? I protested the war in Vietnam. I protested, you know, the equality of people and all of that. You see, but what? So I, you know, that was physical. Now then, you see that I've come into class. You see, my protest is against the lies that people are telling. You see, in the spirit. You mm -hmm. see. The, the physical, I'm going to uh, let, well, the physical and the spiritual, I'm going to let Yahweh take care of the whole thing because he's the one in charge. He's the one taking care of things. My concentration has got to be upon him and upon what he's telling me. I've got a clean, I, I can't do it, but you understand, but I've got a clean Chuck up. I've got to go, I got to, I got to take care of what's within Chuck's mind, the things that are keeping me from understanding the keep things that are keeping me from coming to class the mm -hmm. things that are keeping me you see concentrating on the physical things instead of concentrating on the spiritual things you see my protest is completely different than what it used to be you see i understand that my protest out here in the world is not going to do any good you see it's going right according to yahweh's plan it's going right according to yahweh's purpose you see yeah. he's got this thing in control That's not right. me and so i you know, I, 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 if I'm out here worrying about the physical, if I'm out here getting all caught up being a Republican or a, or a Democrat or an independent, you see, I'm taking my mind off of Yahweh and I'm taking my mind off of the things that are important, you see. So me going out here and protesting and raising heck because I don't like some of the things that's going on, you see, is taking my mind off of Yahweh. And all of our concentration, all of our efforts, you see, has to be in this time because of the getting into the time of, of, of he's, 
at my age, okay, he's either going to take me out shortly or he's going to take this world out shortly. Either way you look at it, I'm going to be a goner, you see. So my concentration, my effort, you see, needs to be on Yahweh and on Yahshua the Messiah because that is my only hope of glorification. That is my only hope of salvation. You understand? Read. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. And this now, world, wow, this world is stubborn. We are not going to change it. You understand? Nothing we can do. Read. Now she is without, now in the streets and lieth in wait at every corner. We got a she, church on every corner. You understand? We've got, you know, we got everything around, everything. This whole creation, this whole world is laying in wait. Satan is doing, every, he is working overtime right now to get us to not concentrate upon Yahshua the Messiah. He's doing everything he can to turn us, uh, with, to concentrate on physical things other than spiritual things. And when we do that, in spirit, we are committing adultery because we're turning away from Yahweh. We're turning our attention away from Yahweh. You understand? It's, it would, it, 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 in the physical, it's like me, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a married man. And it's like me turning my attention away, you see, from my wife, you see, looking after other women. You understand? Uh, we all have to struggle with things and we all have to struggle with, with all kinds of, but we can take and we can turn our eyes to Yahshua the Messiah, you see, keep our eye on him, you see, and it keeps us from these things. But I'm worried about the spirit, you see. That's my whole concentration right now is the spiritual things. The world is going to do what the world is going to do. Mm -hmm. I have to take and prepare myself. And when I say I have to prepare myself, I know, and I know that you know, that it's Yahshua in you doing it, that That's we right. cannot do it. You understand? So when I say these things, I want you to understand that I'm not saying that I can do anything. The only thing I can do is step back and relax and let Yahshua work within me. And it even takes Yahshua within me to make me step back and relax. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's, it's a paradox. It's a, it's a catch-22, if you will. You understand? Read. So she caught him and kissed him with an imprudent face and said unto him, I have, I, I have peace offerings with me this day. I have prayed my vows. Therefore, mm -hmm. I came. Go ahead. Therefore, I came forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I See, have this, this, this is the world. This is the mm -hmm. world. You understand they're talking about the physical world here trying to allure you yes. trying to seduce you you see you know just accept jesus in your heart and in your mind and you'll be okay you understand mm -hmm. everything will be all right you won't have to worry about uh, adultery and fornication you won't have to worry about you're going to have a good cadillac you're going to have a good job you're going to have a very good income all you have to do is accept jesus into your heart and into your mind, you see, and you have all these things. And it's a damn lie. You understand? Read, please. I have found, I have decked my bed with covering of tapestry, with carved work, with fine linens of Egypt. I have mm -hmm. perfumed my bed and with myrrh, aloe, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our, our fill of love unto the morning. Let us solo, solace unto ourselves with love it's, it's sensual things <laughs> yeah Simple. taste you understand <laughs> you know alluring you you understand yeah. with all the things of the world all the fine things of the world to allure you to the bed you see in the bed of corruption you see it is it read please for the good man is not was not at home he is gone on a long journey and you see, the thing of it is, our good man does not leave us. That's right. You understand? Our good man is with us, and he's with us continually. You understand? So that's the good thing that we have. The world out here, unfortunately, and I really, truly, honestly feel sorry for them, mm -hmm. because they do not have that good man. Mm -hmm. You see, 
I don't, it's nothing because Chuck is anything special or you're anything special. You see, it's just that through grace and mercy, which the world does not understand. And I have a, and I have a feeling that there's a lot of people in class that still are not understanding what real true grace and mercy is, you see. But I tell you what, he's beaten me down to the point to where I understand that there's only one way you understand that I'm mm -hmm. ever going to have salvation. And that is with him in me, which is the grace and which right. is the mercy is him in you. You understand? And it's only through that and having that good man in me all the time, you see, because he's not going on a long journey. He's right within each and every one of us. Read, please. He had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at that day appointed. And see, a lot of people know that this creation is going out, but they're still playing around. Mm -hmm. They're still, well, he hasn't come yet. Uh, I've still got time. Hey, you can walk out that door and die of a stroke. You can walk out the door, you see, right. and a car can hit you. You see, you can walk out that door and he's gonna take this whole creation out in an instant. We have not got time to play games. You understand? We, we have got to be serious because at, just like in Noah's times, you could look at the signs and look at the times. And in the, in the New Testament, it talks about looking at the signs and looking at the times. And when we look at the signs and we look at the times, we must all, I think we can all agree that we have but a short time. That's we right. have not got time to be playing no games out here and getting all caught up in the carnality of the world. You see, read please. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With flattering of her lips, she voiced, she voiced him. See, she with the flattering him. of the lips, the world out here is telling you, oh, don't worry, everything's going to be all right. If you elect this person, everything's going to be right. Nah, <laughs> baloney. You know, if you do this, everything's going to be right. The church is out here telling you with flattering lips, you see, just accept Jesus into your heart and into your mind. Everything will be fine. You know, causing you to yield, you see, until that false pretense, if you will. I was wanting to say something else, but I cleaned up my language. Okay, read. <laughs> he goeth after her straight way as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the corrections of the stock. You see, like, we can all relate to this, you mm -hmm. see. Read. Till I dark strike through her liver as a bird hastened to the snare and know it not that it is for his life. You see, what is going on right now is, is for your life. Mm -hmm. You understand? You see, this is talking about eternal life. You understand? And if we go out here and we get caught up in this, you know, we're going to get shot through the liver. We're going to get shot through the heart. Mm -hmm. You understand? And he is giving us a new heart and a new mind, you understand? He is clothing us in his clothes. You see, he is giving us an armor. And I was just thinking about this the other day. We say, put on the helmet of righteousness and the breastplate, you understand? Now you've got the helmet, you've got your mind, you've got your brain, that's symbolic of your mind. The breastplate that you put on, the armor of the breastplate, that would be a correlation to your heart. So he is putting, you see, he is protecting our heart. Yes. He's protecting our mind. You understand? With this armor, you understand? And just like back in David, David realized that the physical armor, you know, that he needed, that wasn't his protection, that his right. real protection was Yahweh protecting his heart and his mind. That was his armor. And that's yes. showing forth, you see, that we should be looking at the spiritual and not concentrating on the physical. The physical is not going to save you. The physical is not going to protect you. It's only Yahshua. It's only the spirit that's going to save you. Read. Five minutes, Chuck. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. See, this is Yahweh speaking, attend to the word. And that's what we're doing with these classes and these Zoom classes. And we're going to be shortly going back to our physical classes. And that's what we're doing, you see, is listening to his words. And on the day of Pentecost, you understand, on the day of Pentecost, he poured that out on his creatures. And now we are listening to his words. Read, please. 
Let not thy heart decline to her ways or grow astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Now give me over in Revelations, please, where you read about the woman clothed in the sun. 12 and 7. And then I'll be done. Oh. You got it? 12 and 1, I think. 12 and 1. Is that it? That's what you want? Oh, and yeah. there appear, yep. Mm -hmm. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Upon her okay. head, a crown of 12 stars. So here, here, I was just, uh, I just thought about this just, la just last night. Now here is a woman, which is feminine, clothed with the sun. Now this is what he's putting around us. He's clothing us. The woman, you see, are those attributes of wisdom, knowledge, intelligence. These, this is the woman and is clothed in the sun or Yahshua the Messiah. You see, that's within him, you see. And he is pouring that out to us and he is giving that. Now we are that woman, you see, even though I'm a male, even though I'm, you know, a, a, a man, you see, from a spiritual standpoint, I'm a woman and he's clothing me mm -hmm. in those righteous, in that righteous principles of, of uh, knowledge and wisdom and, and all of that stuff, you understand? And I'm within, and it's all within him or within the son. I hope somebody got something out of that. Uh, all honor and praises go to Yahshua, the Messiah, the only, only way of hope and glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Charles. For our next speaker, I'd like to introduce Dr. Susie Zakowski from our Rhode Island branch. Good morning. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Um, good to be back with everyone and um, to be joining our Zoom family. Um, wow, Chuck covered so many um, things in sharing how Yahweh has helped provide or has, has not helped, has provided us with a new heart and a new mind and a new way to, to understand and to function by blessing us with an understanding of this gospel that we're, we're participating in. Um, the scripture reading in Acts 2 talks about the day of Pentecost. And as Chuck mentioned, it was a fulfillment or bringing into the reality what happened back at Mount Sinai, also on June 6th, where Yahweh spoke in a covenant and gave a law to the people back then. Uh, could we get Isaiah 46, 9 and 10? Let's talk about a few principles in the way that Yahweh works his purpose. Because if you sh stay with us and learn with us, you're going to be able to see how the mind of your creator works. You're actually gonna be able to look into the mind of Yahweh and understand how he has done things and provided a way for us to understand those things. So this scripture that we're going to read is one way that you can participate in the divine thinking of the mind of Yahweh. Could somebody read that for Isaiah me please? Isaiah 46. Remember this and show yourself, excuse me, remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh and there is none else. I am Elohim and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it and I will also do it. So Yahweh has a purpose. He's purposed it and he's making it happen. He will do it. And important to understand as part of that purpose 
is that he declares the end from the beginning. Now, we try to do that. And I had mentioned to some people that I was busy the last few weekends uh, at work. We're in budget season. And I realized that thinking about doing budgets is another way to prove how bad we are at declaring the end from the beginning. Because no matter what we say, what we put out there, what we think will happen, it's never that way. And so you wonder why you spend, you know, two or three weeks of your life working till nine o'clock at night trying to get these budgets done, when in reality, I'd be just as probably effective at throwing dice or using one of those <laughs> magic eight balls or something like that. But Yahweh, on the other hand, has a divine purpose and does declare the end from the beginning and has shown us how to see how that happens. So in going back to what Chuck had referenced, we see back at Mount Sinai how he has brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, brought them to this mountain and uh, spoken in his law and his um, intent, his purpose to the children of Israel. And he made a covenant with them, an agreement with them that uh, they, they said what Yahweh has said we will do. And so rolled forward this covenant called the Mosaic Covenant that had laws and had expectations for behavior uh, Chuck referenced the, the foods and the clean and the unclean, and there were all sorts of laws and ordinances with this particular covenant. And then we come up to the day of Pentecost, thousands and thousands of years later, the Messiah has come in, died, buried, resurrected, and during his time on the earth plane, he told people that he was fulfilling and it was written in the prophets that he would be doing certain things in fulfillment. And the word fulfillment means to bring to a designed end, to finish, to complete. So this is an example of where a beginning was declared back at Mount Sinai and an end was happening back at, with the time of the Messiah, his death, burial, resurrection, ascension and then the outpouring of the holy spirit on the day of pentecost and it was bringing in a new law written in a newly given hearts and minds that chuck also referenced and we're not going to get the scripture but if you haven't investigated this particular um, principle that yahweh has manifested in the scriptures you'll want to read in Je jeremiah the 31 31st chapter starting around verse 31 where he talks about there's going to be a new agreement a new covenant and it's not going to be like the old so he's telling you that what he did with Moses and the children of Israel this new covenant was going to be different and it was going to be written in your heart and in your mind whereas back there it was written on tables of stone and it was not in the people to keep those laws they didn't have it in their heart to keep those laws so Yahweh was going to do something different with the covenant that he was, the new covenant that he was going to make. Now, when you read in um, Acts in the second chapter, it actually, the, the um, backdrop to this starts in the first chapter. So if we could go back to Acts 1 for a moment and let's start at... Um, maybe three. Let's start at verse three. Six, one and three. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Elohim. All right, so this is talking about Yahshua the Messiah, and it says that he showed himself alive after his death, burial, and resurrection by many infallible proofs. So we would want you to also expect us in sharing what we understand, what we have seen and do understand, to also provide you with the proofs for those, the witnesses. And 
uh, our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley said that he wanted to prove to your satisfaction. He wanted us to provide witnesses, explanations, to take as much time and effort as we could to make sure you are satisfied with what we are offering you as the truth. The world offers a lot of things that they claim are true, important, valuable to you. You have to make some kind of a, a discernment, some kind of a judgment as to what you're going to accept and believe because your eternal life depends on it. So you should expect witnesses, you should expect proof. And in this case, it says that Yahshua provided them with many infallible proofs. And he was doing this over 40 days. And in Yahweh's purpose, there's a pattern that includes the principle of a time frame of 40. So if you go in to investigate that, that's where this falls into, the, into this pattern that you can take a look at. And he was doing this all speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Elohim. Read. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but want, wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye shall, ye have heard of me. All, all right. right. So all of these people, you find out um, as this goes on, that there's 120 people assembled together and you can imagine the state of their minds after what has just gone on. The man that they've been following, that they um, thought was going to be able to bring them into a, a new kingdom, a new state of being, he was just killed. And they are at a loss for what to do next. Now, where do we go? Now, who do we follow? Because you know man's mind, it always looks for the the person or the figurehead to follow. And so he commanded them when he reappeared after his resurrection that they don't depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise which he had spoken to them about, the promise of the Father. Read. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. And so he tells them, he reminds them, he brings back to their remembrance because he is the comforter. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So he's making a distinction. They had all been baptized of John's baptism, but the word but means something different is going to happen but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost really soon, read. When they themselves were come together, they asked of him saying, Master, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the season, for the Father hath put in his own power, but ye receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you and ye shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the other uttermost part of the earth. All right. And so they're asking him, what about this, this kingdom? When, are you, when are, is the kingdom going to be restored? And their focus, their minds were on the fact that they did not have their own land and their own place to live. The Romans were there. Um, they wanted their own physical kingdom of Israel. And we know that that hope, that expectation still exists today. That's part of the challenge over in the Middle East as to everybody wanting their own kingdom and their own land with all of this religious significance. And it started right back after the death of the Messiah. They were so focused on what they thought he was going to do when he came in that they didn't really hear what he was saying to them. And so he essentially says, not for you to know right now, but you will receive power after the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. So he's trying to redirect their thoughts and tell them what's going to really happen. 
And then it says, after he'd spoken these things, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. So when we go back over into, and I, I'm not going to spend time on that for right now, but when we go back into chapter two, the day of Pentecost is fully come. The, um, there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled the house where they were sitting, appeared unto them as cloven tongues of fire and sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. So this is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that Yahshua was referring to in the first chapter. Um, happened very shortly after he reminded them of what he said was going to happen. Now, I need to point out when we get a little bit later in the chapter, um, you'll recall that we read about, they talk about baptizing the people and um, having people receive the Holy Spirit, but also needing to be baptized. And it talks about being baptized in the name of Yahshua for the remission of sins. You're going to find when you read in Acts that even though the Holy Spirit was poured out on this day of Pentecost, it did not give them uh, an all-encompassing immediate revelation of all the things that they did not understand yet and needed to know about um, how things worked under the new covenant. And so because they had to be baptized, they, they even referred to that in the first chapter, they went through John's baptism, then they thought that there was an association with water baptism and the Holy Spirit. And you also read that later on that they argue about whether the Gentiles who get brought into this understanding seven years later, whether they need to be circumcised and how all these laws that they were under for so long, um, they thought all that meant that the Gentiles needed to be like the Jews. And so it should be comforting to us that we also realize we don't get everything in one instantaneous revelation. We learn and grow. And there's a lot of things that we have that we may not even realize, but we have as theories, concepts, opinions about how God works, what God wants. Um, we learn about Yahweh under the new covenant in pieces and the understanding drops in as things get cleared up for us. And we understand we the light shines on the darkness in these theories, concepts, and opinions that we have within us. And Chuck was talking about that as well. Now, um, uh, uh, correlation to that, I've had a number of things on my mind lately that have seemed to kind of fall in with this class today. Um, uh, a correlation with that is the principle in the world where people are struggling with hoarding. And I have, um, had a recent experience with that with a member of my family, as has someone else in our class here. And so it got me thinking about how the natural example of hoarding works with the principles in this class. And we all would have a testimony that when we walked in the door, we had so much stuff, I'll use the word stuff, we had so much stuff in our heads, in our thoughts, in the way that we looked at the world, the way that we responded to the world, the way that we thought about God, the way that we thought heaven worked, salvation worked, um, if we believed in any of those things, um, our relationship with one another, um, the relationships towards people we liked or didn't like, just there, so much stuff, it was amazing they talk about in, in examples of people that hoard, sometimes there is a very tiny path from say their front door through their entire house to maybe the kitchen or the bathroom or something. And other than that, you can't get into any space within their house because they have so much stuff. And it's piled from floor to ceiling, wall to wall. Um, the information said that for the most part, hoarders don't necessarily believe they have a problem. They know other people think they have a problem, but to them, there are, there are reasons why they think everything's a treasure and why they keep everything for future use, or they don't want to waste things, or they have sentimental value. 
And um, it only gets to be a problem when say they can't have people over or people give them a hard time about their circumstances. Um, if we go into Matthew, I think it's chapter six. Um, let's take a look at that. And I'll, it, it talks about treasures um, is what I'm looking for the verses. Uh, Um, and they have cedar closets and other things to try and prevent this, but it's not unusual if you pull out an item that you had stored away in a closet or, or, or somewhere, and you'll find that moths have eaten holes into the garment, or <laughs> you have a car, and over time, especially in upstate New York when I lived there, um, rust would affect the, the um, body of the, of the car. This is just a natural example of things um, from a spiritual, psychological mind and heart standpoint. It points out the verse says where thieves break through and steal. So from a natural standpoint, somebody could break into your car and steal it. Um, but what we want is to lay up treasures in heaven mm -hmm. and where you're not talking about moth or rust or where thieves don't get into things. Um, and it says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So it points out that whatever you value, whatever you say is a treasure, whatever you think is important to you, that's where your heart is. And so we hope that over time, our heart has been turned and is um, uh, dedicated to, devoted to, um, inspired by in love with the things of Yahweh so that the, our hearts are caught up in the heavenly treasures and the spiritual treasures and not the things of the world, whether it be natural physical things or our thoughts and concepts and opinions um, that we talk about, that I was talking about from a hoarding standpoint. So we need to kind of take a step back and allow Yahweh um, take the advice of stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh while you're standing still and seeing his salvation, he's cleaning out that those things that you've been hoarding. And sometimes we don't even realize it at the time. We look back and think, well, where did that problem go? Or where did that opinion get changed? Or where did I get that knowledge and that wisdom so that what I had brought in the door got left behind, um, is, is no longer ruling, um, no longer influencing the way that I think or that I interact with people. And it's an amazing thing as Yahweh does that, that cleaning out, um, that the place sparkles, the place is bright and light and airy and, um, trying to use kind of physical description to describe a freshly cleaned out um, home. And he only, he has the ability to make that like a, a new abode, um, a new heart and mind, a new home for, for our spirit, for our soul. Um, the other thing that I wanna mention that had come into my mind is uh, I was watching a television show where they had an episode and an event or an occurrence that they um, called terminal lucidity. Um, the word terminal, T-E-R-M-I-N-A-L, and lucidity, L-U-C-I-D-I-T-Y. And it was an example with, or a situation with an Alzheimer's patient who um, someone was visiting and they were totally in a normal state of mind with all their remembrances, with all the understanding, um, totally unlike what they had been like for years. They all of a sudden were like normal mental status and recollection and all of this. And they described it as terminal lucidity. And so I looked it up and it said that it's um, a term that 
refers to an unexpected return of mental clarity and memory hmm. or suddenly regained consciousness that occurs in a time shortly before death in patients suffering from psychiatric or neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's. And they've noticed it in patients with um, cognitive impairment such as Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, tumors, strokes, Parkinson's, meningitis, etc. Now, that made me think of how, um, now the word terminal means at the end of something, um, situated at the end of something, occurring at the end of a time frame, um, and lucidity is like clarity or clearness or easy, easy to understand. So I'm thinking about um, the day of Pentecost being like a terminal lucidity event. Yeah. Um, the world was confused. The world did not understand. The world was in darkness. The world had cognitive impairment to use the medical phrase. Mm -hmm. And um, then at the, the end of that age, the beginning of this one, there was this event that occurred that provided clarity and understanding and the ability to see where there had been darkness. And so then I thought about Doc's vision and how at the end of this age, he was he had the event of terminal lucidity as this creation's winding down and our um, world is just increasingly out of control and from a clinical psychological standpoint, um, there's no therapy that's going to fix what's going on in the world today. Um, so we're having a similar event, the end declared from the beginning in this age and dispensation of this clarity just before things are going to end. Um, Doc had the vision and the revelation. And then even more kind of on a microcosm, you look at what's going on now in the school and there is a lot of confusion and darkness and men's theories, concepts and opinions. Um, and yet some people are being pulled out of that and brought into the light, brought into clarity um, right at the end times so that we, we don't lose hope for anybody. We know Yahweh can can pull somebody out of a fire, can save somebody from a lion's den. This is the end of the age and it's his purpose and we're watching what's happening, but he is able to provide this clarity um, for some people that have been caught up in all the, the cognitive impairment, so as to speak, that some of the perversion of the God Peter, could we get First Peter four seventeen? Um, because this terminal lucidity kind of made me think about this particular example as well. Um, I am jumping around a little bit. I hope people can see how, in my mind at least, these principles are moving from one to the other. Um, and I obviously will be happy to answer any questions um, after, after the class if uh, anyone has any. First Peter 4, um, verse 17, please, I think, unless it seems for, to make sense to start up a little bit and see what you this, think. For this time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. And if it is first begins, at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Yahweh? All right, so in reading this scripture, it struck me, it says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh Elohim and it first begin at us. What will be the end of them that obey not the gospel? So the judgment is occurring within the assembly or the body um, of of. Yahweh Elohim uh, of those of us gathered in his name. And um, if we can go back, um, the parallel is in Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, back in the um, prophets. And I think starting at one, 
Ezekiel 9 and 1. I believe that's the right chapter. Is that the one with the um, writer and the ink horn and the putting the mark on? Yes. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. He cried okay. also in my ears with a loud voice saying, cause them that have charge over the city to draw near every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughtered weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen and with a writer's ink horn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Keep reading. And the glory of Yah and the glory of the house and the glory of Yahweh Elohim of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house, and he called the man clothed with the linen and had the writer's ink horn by his side. And Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, to this through the midst of in Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that that fly and cry for all for the abomination that was done in the midst thereof. Okay, so um, thank you, Rochelle, we'll stop there. And so Yahweh said unto this man, go through the midst of the city, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that cry, that sigh and cry for the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. So you have somebody that's being given a mission by Yahweh to put a mark on the foreheads of those that that are um, that sigh and cry for the abominations, that that hate what they're seeing and hate what is happening to the house of Yahweh and to those um, that that are there. And let's see, wait a minute. Um, Did I miss it too? It talks about um, starting at the sanctuary or? Yes, that, which um, verse is that scripture in? Um, six. Oh, nine and six? Yes, um, read six, Rochelle, thank you. Slay, uh, slay utterly old and young, both ma maid and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom the, is the mark, and begin at the sanctuary that they begin at the ancient men which were from before the house. Okay, so so on this mission, he's not going to touch any person on whom is the mark, mm -hmm. because they sigh and cry for the abominations. But he's going to begin at his, at the sanctuary and the ancient men. So it's saying that Yahweh, Yahweh's looking on the hearts and the minds and that just because someone is an elder or appears to be functioning in the sanctuary, that that doesn't mean that they're not um, a, a target, not one whose heart and mind is not acceptable to Yahweh, who doesn't, won't have a mark on their forehead as this judgment plays itself out. And you can feel that happening um, as we go through these end times here. Chuck mentioned that we can kind of feel the consummation on the horizon at this mm -hmm. point. And um, the earth plane is, is falling apart. Our bodies are falling apart. Yeah. It's just, you can read the sign of the times. Um, in the last scripture, I'd like to get, uh, if we get 1 Corinthians 2, um, I believe verse 9. Just a second. Okay, first Corinthians two and nine. Um, but as it is written, Eve hath not seen nor ear heard, neither I. or I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me start again. But it is but as it is written, I have not seen nor heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim hath prepared for them that love him. But Elohim hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Elohim. All right, so 
um, our comforting, our promise is that our eyes have not seen, our, our ears heard, <clears throat> neither has entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim has prepared for them that love him. So even, even the experiences we have had, the understanding with the eye, the illumination of the eye of our understanding, the things that our spiritual ears have heard, those are still, they don't even touch yet what Yahweh has prepared for them that love him. So <clears throat> the, the example of terminal lucidity, that clarity that happens just before the end of, of <clears throat> life to some people, that's, that's a type and a shadow. And as we pass over into the next age, we will get to see and hear the things which Yahweh has prepared for him but it should be inspirational and it should be exciting to us that the, all the joy and the things that we have seen and experienced today are, are not, don't even compare yet. So it's, the mind can't even imagine. We can't grasp what is waiting for us. And with that, I thank you for listening. Oh, hallelujah. Beautiful. Thank you, Susie. For our next speaker, I'd like to introduce the Dean of the Ithaca Branch School, Dr. Robert White. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Yes. <clears throat> so much has been brought out. I've really, really enjoyed class today. Mm -hmm. and uh, have enjoyed all of the classes since we started Zoom. And uh, I thank each and every one of you that show up um, for what you bring to the class and, and share. Um, so much has been brought out. Um, Susie was talking about that clarity at the end, that uh, testimony of a firefighter who was in class. I find, I find those kind of testimonies um, discerning. Anyway, um, Yahshua in his ministry was fulfilling all that was written of him aforetime in the Law and the Prophets. And the founder said that if we go back and we search the scriptures or search the law and the prophets. When you do, you find the spirit there. Well, what did he mean by that? The principles that we now have come to understand in this present kingdom age of grace, all are listed in the old covenant or that full testament that was given back at Mount Sinai, which Chuck brought up. And when we go to the law and the prophets, we're searching for those principles because the new covenant of the New Testament in reality is drawn right out of the old. That's right. And when Yahshua came in, his job was to accomplish those things that were written that testified of him. Therefore, when we go back and look at the migration of the children of Israel from Egypt up to Canaan's land, <clears throat> that's all pointing to a redemption. When we see the laws that Yahweh had given physical Israel back under the old covenant, each and every one of them can be translated into a spiritual principle. All the furnishings in the tabernacle are showing forth Yahshua. All the steps in the tabernacle are showing forth Yahshua. The tabernacle in its entirety is showing forth Yahshua. And the giving of the Holy Spirit, 
which today's scripture lesson was dealing with Pentecost. Um, let's go to Exodus 23 and pick up 14, please. Now, the things that the children of Israel were required to do, they were required to do physically so. That's the type, that's the shadow, that's the example, that's not the reality. Mm -hmm. The uh, reality has to be drawn out of those commandments and laws. Okay, please read. 14. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of the unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee, in the time appointed of the month of Abia. For in it thou shalt, thou camest out from Egypt, and none appeared be, before me empty. And the feast of the harvest, the first fruit of the late of thy labors, which thou hast sown, sown in the field, and the feast of the ingatherings, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered the labors of the field. Three times in a year, all the males shall make shall appear before Yahweh Elohim. Thou shalt not offer the blood of the sacrifice with unleavened bread, neither shall the fat of the sacrifice remain until the morning. The first fruit of the, the first of the first fruit of the land thou shalt bring into the house of Yahweh, thy Elohim. Thou shalt not seek the kid in his mother's milk. Okay. So, what are we looking at here? We're looking at Yahweh setting up ordinances. Mm -hmm. physical Israel under the old covenant and three times a year he was very strict about that old testament yeah three times a year they had to gather before him and they had to he's instituting these feast days and they had to indulge in these feast days according to how he set them up and it's repeated in the prophets now, when Yahshua comes in, what do you think he's going to do? Forget all the feast days that Yahweh has set up? No. Didn't he have to keep the Passover? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Living bread? Mm -hmm. let's, let's quickly go over to Ex Levit Leviticus. Uh, 23, pick it up at 15. 23 and what? 15. Sorry. Sorry. Twenty-three. Oh. Twenty-three fifteen. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought a the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbath shall be complete. Now, how many days of seven Sabbaths? Forty seven times. Seven times seven would be what? Math 49. 49. Okay, so we're establishing back here in Leviticus, in the law, that they were to count seven Sabbaths. Go ahead, 16. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number 50 days and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto Yahweh. So, how many days are we talking here? 50. Pentecost. We're talking 50 days. Mm -hmm. Or Pentecost. That's right, Rochelle. Go ahead and read. <coughs> um, ye shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaf, two wave loaf of two tenth deal. They shall be of fine flour, and they shall be baked with leaven. They are to be first fruits unto Yahweh. And, and ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock, and two rams. They shall be for the burnt offering unto Yahweh. With their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto Yahweh. They shall sacrifice one kid 
of the goats for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall wave them with the bread uh, of the first fruits for the wave offering before Yahweh and the two lambs. They shall be holy to Yahweh for the priest. So he's establishing all these things way back over 300, 3,000 years ago with the children of Israel. And they are physical feast days, physical sacrifices, and they had to do, be done in a prescribed manner and at a certain time of the year or a certain date. And this is all pointing out Yahweh's purpose. It's establishing it so that we can follow the line down uh, Isaiah um, 55. So shall my words be that goeth forth out of my mouth it so, shall not shall, so shall my words be, just like the rain, so shall my words be, just like in the creation, so shall my words be. He's emphasizing his words. That's important. Yeah. So shall my words be, read. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. That goeth it forth shall out not. Out of Yahweh's mouth, not Bob White's mouth. Not Rick Trivison's mouth, but Yahweh's mouth. So shall my words be that goeth forth out of my mouth, read. It shall not return unto me void. It's, it, listen, it's going to be fruitful. It's not going to return unto me void. Read. But it shall accomplish, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It's, going, it shall... to, it's going to accomplish or succeed. Whatever goes out of Yahweh's mouth is going to be successful. It's going to be fruitful. He's declaring this. Read. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I send it. How about that? Mm -hmm. Now, everything that he's establishing, <clears throat> where did they get it from? They got it from his mouth. <laughs> We wouldn't know squat about this teaching if Yahweh hadn't sent the man in the close of this age to preach it unto us. It had to come forth from, not Dr. Kinley's mouth, That's right. Yahweh's oh, mouth. Right. And I think if you even listen to a tape of the founder, you can see what we're talking about. No man spoke like this man. You know, the scribes and the Pharisees, they sent some of their boys to go pick up Yahshua <laughs> and bring him to them. And when they went, he's speaking from the mountain. Now he's got to fulfill scripture. Yeah. When he spoke from Mount Sinai, things happened. The whole creation shook. So when these men returned unto the Sanhedrin council without Yahshua, they said, well, where is he? Why didn't you bring him? And what did they say? No man, no man. has spoken like this man. Mm -hmm. In other words, you want him, go get him yourself. <laughs> so here we are. He's established Pentecost. He's established these feast days. He's established these holidays. He's established these sacrifices. And he's got to fulfill all of them. All of them. He can't leave not one unfulfilled or unaccomplished. He didn't come in to keep the law. He came in to accomplish it or fulfill it. Uh, let's go over to Isaiah. No, let's go to Psalms. 
Psalms 51, please. And before you get that, someone give me Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, and pick it up at 25, please. Actually, 24. Ezekiel. You want it Ezekiel first? Yes, please. All right. 25 and 24. Mm -hmm. 36 and 24. Oh. I'm having a terrible time here today. Okay. Sorry. Right. We have a computer problem. I have a computer. Yeah. 36 and I'm sorry, what verse? 24. 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of out of all countries and will bring you unto your own land. Now, didn't we just read this in Acts the seventh cha second chapter? Mm -hmm. Didn't he bring them from all over the world? Yeah. Why? Because it was a year of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. So they came unto Jews from all nations gathered into Jerusalem. He's bringing them into their own land, physically so, there. And it lists all the different countries that it came from. I'm not going to go back and take the time to read it because time is short. But it's in there. Go ahead and read. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and mm -hmm. you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse mm -hmm. you a new heart also I will give you and a new spirit will I put within you mm -hmm. and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh he's going to give you a living heart because the heart that he had under the old covenant was a dead heart that's right go ahead and read I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Now, what's the difference between that old covenant and the new covenant? You're going to be able to keep the new covenant. Why? Because he's going to be in you causing you to do it. Right. So nobody's going to be able to take credit. Well, uh, uh, see, look, look, look what Rick <laughs> and I can do. Look, 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 look what Scott Miller can do. <laughs> No, that ain't the way that it is. Look what Yahweh has blessed these people with. A knowledge and an understanding or fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, now we'll go back to Psalms 51, please. Pick it up right at one. Um, Psalms 51 mm -hmm. and one. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is Psalms 51 and one. To the chief musicians, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba, mm -hmm. have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, according to according to thy long loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. So what is David doing? Is he's pleading yeah. in this psalm or this psalm to Yahweh directly? He's not, he's not confessing this to no priest. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thy only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and, sin, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thy desire is truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts that the hidden part thou had made me to know wisdom. So what's he praying oh, for here? Wisdom. What's he praying for here? Wisdom. Yeah. That's an invisible, intangible principle. It's not physical oh. and where does he want this wisdom to be it's within him and in, in him in his inward parts mm -hmm. and this is way back a long time before yashua came in yeah. and that cross so when we go back and search the scriptures we're looking for those principles that's mm -hmm. exactly what we're doing here all right go ahead and seven purge me with his Stop right there. Now, what was hyssop used for in the day of uh, uh, during the Passover? 
the blood was placed on the so door. You equate hyssop with, with what? Blood. With, with blood. So there's your blood. Go ahead and read. And I shall be cleansed. Wash me, and I shall be whether whiter than snow. No, what, what, what do you wash with? Water. Yeah. Open water. You wash with water. There's your water. Mm -hmm. We've got blood. We've got water. Read. Make me to hear joy and gladness. That Make my me to hear joy and gladness. Is joy physical? No. Is gladness physical? Well, no. there's your spirit. So you've got blood, water, and spirit. We're reading the scriptures according to a pattern. That my bones, which thou hast broken, may be may rejoice. Go ahead. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Yahweh, and, re and renew a right spirit within me. Okay, drop down to uh, 15. O Yahweh, upon, upon, open thy, give me, O Yahweh, open thou my lips and my mouth shall shew from thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifices, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The so sacrifice. Did Yahweh delight in sacrifices and burnt offerings? No. And we have that all throughout Scripture. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. The sacrifices of Yahweh Elohim are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh, Yahweh, thou wilt not despise. Thou. We're, we're, we're getting into the meat of it here. Mm -hmm. he's, he's telling you before Pentecost what a spiritual sacrifice is. Mm -hmm. What is it? It's a broken and contrite heart. Yeah. That's not physical. A broken and contrite heart or a broken and contrite soul. When he shows his greatness to us, we realize for the first time how ungreat we are. Yeah. And as we kept reading over there in Ezekiel, it said, look, <laughs> you look at yourself and you loathe yourself. Yes. When you see the greatness of Yahweh. Nothing can compare to it. There's nothing finer. An infamous dean from Rhode Island said to me one time, show me something that's greater than a revelation from Yahshua. <laughs> I couldn't. Okay, read please. Do good in thy good pleasures unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then thou shalt be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall thy offer bullocks upon thy altar. So when you finally have a broken or contrite heart, what is contrition? What does contrite mean? It means broken down with sorrow for sin. Right. And just like these self-help groups that folks go to when they have a problem, let's just take alcoholism. When you go to Alcoholics Anonymous, what's the first step that you have to? Admit you have a problem. You've got to I'm say, you have a problem. hi, my name is Bob. I'm an alcoholic. And everyone goes, hi, Bob. That's step number one. You've got to look. Until we get that, to that point, spiritually and psychologically, yeah, we can't do anything for us as far as salvation. We've got to realize and be broken down with sorrow for sin before he can help us. And that's a major revelation. No one wants to be wrong. Never had a right thought about the right.
Psalms 27, I think it's a sixth verse. Got it here. Um, yep, 27 and six. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto Yahweh. So singing praises and offering sacrifices of joy. We are in perilous times, even from a natural standpoint. The world is a powder keg waiting to go off. Yeah. And we still have joy in our hearts or in our souls, um, don't we? Yes. And more, that joy is the spirit of Yahshua. And it just amazes me to see how people are just so burnt out on being incarcerated for a year. And they're going crazy and misbehaving on airplanes. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, that's a dangerous place to act a fool. I know. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a flight attendant. And they showed on the news the other day how a, a woman knocked one of the flight attendants, another a female, knocked her two front teeth out. Mm. That's a, people are just going crazy. People have lost their coping skills. Yeah. They can't cope. And did it help those? that we're playing with drugs. No, more of them are dying on a daily basis. They can't cope. So they try to alter their state of mind with chemicals. Been there, done that. That's not the route. Okay, uh, uh, Deuteronomy, please. What in Deuteronomy? 33, 19, did we get that? No, we did. Okay. And this is Deuteronomy 33 and 19. It says, Thou, they shall call the people unto the mountain. There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall suck of the, uh, of the abundance of the seas and of the treasures hid in the sand. Now, Yahweh's purpose is a hidden treasure. That's right. And you can't find it without divine intervention. He's going to take you to the treasure and reveal them and bless us with them. It's just everything that's been spoken uh, uh, this morning. It's, 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 been, it's just profound what he's done. And to, and, and to be recipients of his righteous spirit and understand what's going on in the world and not be a nervous wreck or, or, or have to take, you know, pills to get by on a daily basis. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's profound in, with what's going on. Absolutely profound. Um, I think I want Psalms four and five. Let me go over there. No sounds. Yeah. Four and five. Mm -hmm. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in Yahweh. All right, pick it up at four. Four and four and then come down to five, please. Stand in awe and sin not. Mm. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Now... Didn't Susie bring out when they were before they were ready to cross over to the Red Sea? Didn't, yep. didn't Yahweh tell them to be still? Yeah. And 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 the introduction to our textbook. What did the founder tell us to do? Get be away alone by yourself and study. Get away from everything. Get to yeah. a quiet place. There you go. Now you can be in a room full of people. Mm -hmm. And you can go into a quiet place. Hallelujah. Because he has given that to us. 
and we can hear his voice mm -hmm. and we know his voice because we know he's our shepherd and we're not going to follow another in fact when another calls we just look over mm -mm. that's not my daddy I ain't going there that's right and it's sad to see how many have gone mm -hmm. and left the fold. Um, um, I'm getting away from it. Uh, what do I want? What do I want? Uh, First Peter, second chapter. Okay. This is First Peter, second chapter. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as a newborn babe, desiring the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that Yahweh is gracious, to, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of man, but chosen of Yahweh Elohim and precious. Ye also are lively stones, are built up in spiritual houses and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahweh Elohim by Yahshua the Messiah. Now, didn't he uh, promise Israel that back, back 3,500 years ago? Yeah. He promised to make them a peculiar people or a royal kingdom of priests. Hmm. Did, he, did he say that? Yeah, yep. that's in nine. So he, <laughs> that's got to be accomplished or fulfilled, folks. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Now, he's had physical priests yeah. under physical covenant to offer physical sacrifices, but now he's got a spiritual priesthood under a spiritual covenant to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Mm -hmm. so just drawing those principles out of the old and bringing it right into the new. That's right. Okay, keep reading, please. Unto you, therefore, which believe it, he is precious. But unto them which it which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made, is made the head of the corner, and a stone of a stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, be disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Mm -hmm. But ye are chosen. Wait but a minute. Ye are a chosen. Oh, hold it, hold it. Mm -hmm. What, what, what's Peter saying here? Mm -hmm. But ye, oh, there's no you. Oh, yes. It is. <laughs> but you or ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Have we been chosen? Yes. yes. Have we been drawn out of every nation? Yes. We had somebody a couple of weeks ago from Malaysia mm -hmm. who's been coming to class and watching the Zoom classes for a year. I marveled at what he understood and what he shared with us in his testimony. And it's just a witness to us. Go ahead and read. We're but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. That ye should chew, that ye should chew forth the praises of him who had called you out of the darkness into this, into his marvelous light. Now, aren't, aren't we doing that every class? All day. Aren't we just praising his holy name and his purpose? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll close out with Hebrews uh, 13th chapter. <clears throat> You want it at one? Um, Five. Yeah, pick it up at one, please, yes. Hebrews. Oh, 
13, oh, 13 and one. Mm -hmm. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to in, entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Mm -hmm. Remember them that are in, the, in bond, are bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Now, look, a lot of folks don't have it as good as we have it. Mm -hmm. There are folks in some of these larger classes and they're struggling. Yeah. They're struggling to hear the truth or they're struggling to share the truth and they won't be heard. Mm -hmm. That's going on, folks. Yes. And so far, we're not suffering that. Not that we haven't in the past, we have. But right now, we realize the clear and present danger that we're in yeah. spiritually. Keep reading, please. Uh, actually, um, we're out of time. We've got one minute left. Oh, 15 for us. 15? 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to Yahweh continually. That 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 is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name that's that's a spiritual sacrifice folks mm -hmm. and that's the fruit of our lips <clears throat> giving praises unto his holy name i hope that made some sense i have enjoyed class immensely please come back as often as you can i'll turn it back to the moderator hallelujah thank you robert <clears throat> And I'd like to thank everyone for coming and to welcome you back. We're here every Sunday at 11 o'clock till 1 o'clock. Um, and we would love to have you. Um, and right now I'm going to read the doxology from the last two verses of Jude, as it is in the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless, in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, to Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say in unity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.